हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर गजेंद्र पुरोहित ट्यून इन टू अवर यूट्यूब चैनल फॉर इंजीनियरिंग मैथमेटिक्स बीएससी वीडियोस टू हेल्प एस योर कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम्स प्रिपरेशन दिस चैनल इज वेरी हेल्पफुल फॉर यू वेर हायर मैथमेटिक्स इज रिक्वायर्ड टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू अबाउट फूरियर साइन ट्रांसफॉर्म प्रीवियसली आई अपलोडेड टू वीडियोज ऑन फूरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म एंड फूरियर को साइन ट्रांसफॉर्म वेर आई एक्सप्लेन दम इफ यू हैवेंट वॉच इट यू कैन गो टू आई टैब एंड वॉच इट अबाउट फोर इयर्स अगो आई अपलोडेड ऑल द वीडियोज ऑन फूरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म Here I'm upgrading the content little bit. So this is a 2.0 version of the Fourier transform series where I'm trying to include new concepts. So students, let's start quickly. the formula for the cosine transform is exactly the same as fourier transform so if we have any function fx and we have to find its fourier sine transform question is root 2 by pi from 0 to infinity of fx sin sx dx the value of this integral is given in the form of s if you need to find its inverse then this fs will come here and fx will go there we'll integrate with respect to s so what is this called in this case the inverse fourier sine transform i told you the formula for fourier transform if you have to find the fourier transform of any function fs So its function is one upon root two pi from minus infinity to infinity e to the power of iota s x f x d x, and when we start this up here we have one upon root two pi from minus infinity to infinity cos s x plus iota sine s x and f x d x will come when we separate them. Students will get this one upon root two pi from minus infinity to infinity f x cos s x d x plus iota one upon root two pi. Minus infinity to infinity f x sine. We'll take s x d x. If we consider f x as even in this case, we will get the formula for the Fourier cosine transform. If we consider f x as odd, if we assume this to be odd, then in that case, the value of this integration becomes zero. And what does this part become? This part becomes twice of root two by pi. And students, from zero to infinity, f x sine s x. This is what it turns out to be. And then if we simplify this, we will get here two by pi. From zero to infinity, f x sine. We have s x d x, and then students, this is what is called as what? This is the formula of the Fourier sine transform. If any function is given, and you know the formula for its Fourier sine transform, right? We call it f s t students, and its formula is two by pi from zero to infinity, f x sine s x d x. Let's say if we take the inverse Fourier sine transform, then this f s here will be replaced with this f x. So students, f x is equal to here we have the value of this two by pi from zero to infinity f s sine s x d s. So this is our Fourier sine transform formula, and this is its inverse Fourier sine transform formula. Sometimes in some books the formula may be slightly different. So there the formula for the Fourier sine transform will be from zero to infinity f x sine s x d x. This is the formula for the Fourier sine transform, and the formula for inverse Fourier sine transform. the formula for the inverse fourier sine transform we have that here as 2 by pi 2 by pi from 0 to infinity fs sin sx ds it's a bit tricky so you need to be careful both methods and both formulas are used ultimately they both lead to the same answer let's start here and take some questions first question is find the fourier sine transform of this function i have already explained the cosine transform in a previous video i uploaded where i explained the fourier cosine transform i said previously Now I'll tell you how to find the Fourier sine transform of this type of function. So students, that the Fourier sine transform has this formula, which we already know that two by pi from zero to infinity and f x sine s x d x. So students, what is happening here? The function given to us it takes different values at different intervals. So if you see here from zero to one, the value of this function, right? Let's just keep it for later. Sine s x d x. And students, here in this case we have two by pi. From one to two, the value of f x that we have will be different. The rest of it is becoming zero here. Doesn't matter, but I'm still telling you, two by pi and this will come to us as from two to infinity, and f x sine s x d x will come. But students, we know here that for x greater than two, this value is zero. So we'll have the value of these two, and if you see here, then it will come as f s is equal to two by pi from zero to one. Students, in this case, the value of f x is coming here as x. So from zero to one, if x is coming, it will become x sine s x d x, and here two by pi, the value that we are getting from one to two in this is coming here as two minus x sine s x d x. 
Now we will do the integration of this. This will involve by part integration. So here's what we'll do. We'll leave x and then we'll integrate sine which will give us minus cos s x upon. S will come here. Minus, we'll differentiate it and then integrate it twice. If you don't know how to do this, I'm trying to explain it to you. If you have to integrate x sine x, so students here we'll leave x. What will happen with sine x? We'll integrate sine x here. Minus the derivative that we leave behind, we will differentiate that. First, we'll integrate sine x, then the entire term. This is the concept we'll use here. So what we'll do is, we'll leave x, then if we integrate sine s x, s will go down. Minus, we'll take the derivative of x, which will be 1. Then we'll integrate sine once and then again. So the sine will be minus cos s x upon s and again cos will become sine. So students, minus minus becomes plus and this s will appear twice. So the s square will come below, limit will be from 0 to 1, right? So, moving on students, next we have 2 by pi and now we will integrate this. So, we will get this and leave 2 minus x and integrate the sign. Then this will be cos sx upon s minus if we derive this, it will be minus 1. If we do twice, sign will be minus cos, cos will be sign. So, here the minus will remain as it is in sin sx upon. S square will come and the limit is from 1 to 2. So, here if we calculate its value, what will we get? Now students, here we will apply the limit. This will come to us as 2 by pi. We will replace x with 1. So, this will be cos s upon s plus sin s upon s square. If we put 0, then we will get 0 because of x and sin 0 will also be 0. Again, we will set the limit. Wherever there is x, we will put 2. It will become 0. So, if we put 2 here, we will get sin. 2s upon s square minus. So, here we are replacing 1 for x. It becomes 2 minus 1, which is 1 and minus minus becomes plus. It becomes cos s upon s. And this minus minus will again become plus. So, it will be sin s upon s square, right? Where there is x, we will put 1. So, here we see that some terms are cancelled out. So, this cos s upon s gets cancelled out. This becomes twice here. Now, what will we do? Pay attention to this. I take out root 2 by pi as a common factor, then we get 2 here. And it is sin s upon s square. Minus sin 2s upon s square will come. Students, can you see? Sin s upon s square and sin s upon s square will come, right? Now, here the value that we will get is 2 by pi and we will take the LCM for s square. This will get it as 2 sin s and its value is minus 2 sin s cos s minus sin is already there. Here we will take out 2 sin s as a common factor. So it will become 2 into 2 by pi. And students, this sin s will come as a common factor. Here we will get as 1 minus cos s upon s square. So students, what have we got here? Fourier sine transform. In this way, we extract it here. You can also see its proof here. If you are preparing for CSIR net gate or IIT jam. Our book is available on Amazon and Flipkart. You can definitely buy it from there. The next question is to find the Fourier transform of fx is equal to e to the power minus ax. I explained this type of question in cosine transform as well. How to find it in Fourier cosine and to prove. Whenever we encounter this type of question, where it is said Fourier sine transform and prove it. First, you have to find the Fourier sine transform and to prove it. What should we do? We have to take the inverse Fourier sine transform. How we will do it? If you need to find Fourier sine transform of this question, here's what we'll do. Pay attention, we'll get fs is equal to 2 by pi from 0 to infinity and fx sine, sx dx. So we have the value of fx which is given as, this we will get as 2 by pi from 0 to infinity. Students, this will be e to the power minus ax sine sx dx. We know it has a formula. If you haven't known about it, I would like to tell you now. Its formula is e to the power of ax sine bx, we do this in 12th grade. Formula is e to the power ax, a square plus b square. And a sin, bx minus b cos bx. This is the formula we have. We will use this formula here. So students, we will get e to the power minus ax. a square plus s square. That's s square and minus a. Sin sx and minus s. Cos sx. Students, this is the value we will get here. From 0 to infinity, what we will get? We will get this limit. e to the power minus infinite becomes 0 making this entire expression 0, we will substitute 0 for x wherever it appears. So, 1 upon a square plus s square and sin will be 0 and the value of cos 0 is 1. So, this will become minus s, right? So, we will simplify this. Then we will get 2 by pi. s upon a square plus s square, which will be, what will it become? It will become the value of Fourier sine transform here, right? Now, you are being asked to prove this equal to this. So, whenever this happens, what we will do? We will take the inverse Fourier sine transform here. Let's see how to do it. Now in the inverse Fourier sine transform, what happens here is fx comes here and fs goes there, right? So here we will get fx is equal to 2 by pi from 0 to infinity. And here we will get fs sin sx. ds will come, right? 
Students, the fx we have is e to the power of minus ax and when we take its Fourier sign transform, we get this. Now, if we take its inverse, then we get this. Is that clear? So, wherever fx is, we will keep this and wherever fs is present, we will keep this. Clear? So, this is what we are going to do. Students, we will get e to the power minus ax and this will be 2 by pi from 0 to infinity and the value of fs that we get from here, what is the value? It is coming out as 2 by pi and s upon s square plus a square sin s x and d s will be here. Is that right? Root 2 by pi root 2 by pi will become 2 by pi. I will bring it this side, right? From 0 to infinity. S sin s x upon s square plus a square. d s is equal to e to the power minus a x. Students, what is happening here? Minus a is here. Students, wherever x is, we should put m there. So, what will we do? Put x is equal to m. So, wherever x is, what we will do? We will replace it with m. This gives us 2 by pi from 0 to infinity and s sine, then here we will get s m and s square plus a square. d s is equal to, we will get minus a m. Since we have x in the proof and we need here x, what we will do? Wherever we have s here, in place of s, we will put x there. If we do so, what will be the value of d s? It will become d x and I will bring it to that side. This will be from 0 to infinity and x sine x m upon x square plus a square dx is equal to, here we will get the value as pi by 2, e to the power of minus am. So, this way we can very easily prove it. Students, let us move on. So, the next question is asking us to find fx if it is the Fourier sign transform of this. Here, we have the question saying Fourier sign transform of a function fx is this. Then what is fx? We need to find the inverse Fourier sign transform. I mean, you have to find the value of fx. So, I am trying to explain this to you. What was the formula for inverse Fourier sign transform? So, this will be 2 by pi from 0 to infinity. fs sin sx ds. Here, if we enter the formula and solve it, then what we will get? We will find fx. Is that clear? So, that is what we are going to do. So, this fx, I am going to consider it as i. This will be 2 by pi. From 0 to infinity, e to the power of minus as upon s. Sin sx ds will come here. But students, it is not possible to integrate it. This is not possible as s is in the below and we need to integrate with respect to s. Students, we will differentiate this with respect to x. So, Labanese concept is applied. When I explained cosine transform before, I explained this there. If you haven't watched, go to ITAB and watch it. So, here I am differentiating this with respect to x on both sides. So, x is neither here nor is it here. It is only here, right? What we will do is, we will differentiate it. Since the limit we have is constant, nothing will come after it. I will explain the concept of Labanese first. So, e to the power of minus a s upon s and this differentiation will happen here d by dx of sin s x d s will come. Students, if we have any function given like this, where it is given from a to b and f x is given here d x and if I do d by d t, that is if I differentiate it with respect to t, students, what we will do here is differentiate it. We have the value of this from a to b, it is d by d t of f x d x and usually it is done like wherever x is present, we replace it with b. And then we find the derivative of b with respect to x. Where there is x, we replace it with a. Then we take the derivative of a. Since a and b are constants, their values will be 0. The value is equal to this. When we do d by dx, it will be equal to this. Due to constant limits, other parts will have no values. You won't get any values. If you don't know about the Lebanese rule, you can go to a tab and watch my video. Students, we will discuss about di by dx is equal to, we will get here, 2 by pi from 0 to infinity, e to the power of minus a s upon s and students, the derivative of sine will be s, cos s x d s, we are doing with respect to x, s will be a constant, so it will come out, now these two s, what will happen, it got cancelled, so the value we get from here, d i by d x is equal to 2 by pi n from 0 to infinity, e to the power of minus a s cos, so it will be s x d s, what is happening here? Integration is done with respect to s. The constants we have are x and a. So, here I just told you the formula of the sign, right? Similarly, we also have a cos formula. The formula of e to the power of a x and cos b x dx, right? We have e to the power a x, a square plus b square and a cos b x plus b sin b x, we will be using this formula here. So, the value of di by ds here, what will it become? So, d i by d s we will get here as what? 2 by pi. And when we integrate this, students from here we will get the value as e to the power of minus a s upon a square plus x square. 
and now here the value of a is minus a we have the value of b which is x right and this will be minus a cos and we will get the value sx plus x sin sx and the limit that we have here so what will it be it will be from 0 to infinity so here we will have di by dx it is dx i apologize it is x please correct it so we will get 2 by pi and wherever we have s right we will put infinite so it will be 0 minus wherever we have s we will put 0 here so that this will become 1 upon a square plus x square if we substitute 0 here then the value of cos 0 is which is 1 and sin 0 is 0 so the value of this will be it will come out as this now di by dx is equal to students this we will get it as 2 by pi a upon a square plus x square students what we will do next let's do its integration so di is equal to we will get 2 by pi and a upon a square plus x square dx and when we do the integration of this term students what will we get we will get plus c here and as we solve this here we will get 2 by pi and here a will come out and this will become 1 upon a the integration of tan inverse x upon a will be this we can cancel this with a so students the value of i will be coming as 2 by pi the tan inverse will be here as x upon a plus c if we need the value of c what will we do pay attention i at x is equal to 0 so we know that tan 0 is 0 0 plus c will be the equation therefore we have one equation here the second one is the value of i which is here if you see the value of i is this what do we do students here we will put the value of x as 0 right so in this case as soon as i put i at x is equal to 0 here right if i set i at x equal to 0 then the value of sin 0 will become 0 so the value of i we are getting as 0 and from here we are getting this we will equate these two and 0 will be placed here so 0 is equal to 0 plus c which means the value of c will become 0 and we will put it here we have i here whose value is this and what was the value of i actually here it was fx then the value of fx would be 2 by pi tan inverse x upon a so students the one that we have here what will this be this will be the answer and by using the fourier sign transform with the help of it we can find the value of fx in this way so now we are asked to find out this value then i would like to tell you that value of f inverse of e to the power of minus a s upon s is this value which goes like this students so if you look at here the value we get is 2 by pi tan inverse x upon a has come but we need this so wherever there is a i will just put a zero in that place so put a is equal to zero as we put zero e to the power zero will become one the value of f inverse one upon s that we'll get we will obtain it by putting zero in place of a so students x upon zero will become the tan inverse infinity and the value we will get here from this will be pi by two so this will be pi by two if we simplify this then students the value of f inverse one upon s will be root pi by 2 thus in this way we can do this very easily right now look here at this question it is for comment box please comment and let us know how long it took you to solve it if you want to see the entire playlist of the fourier transform you can go here if you want to see my previous videos you can visit us here subscribe to our channel from here thank you so much bye bye